I'm so honored and pleased to have a chance to talk about the adventurous journey of uh, Kyung University in regard to a, a new paradigm or a new architecture of, in higher education uh, for the future of humanity on a global scale. Again, let me quote some passages of a very famous novel. A squat gray building of only 34 stories, period. Over the main entrance, the words Central London Hatchery and Conditioning Center. And in a shield, the world state's motor, community, identity, stability. And quote, and steers, and quote, said the director opening the door is the fertilizing room. Do you know what this is? I believe many of you, or maybe all of you know where this passage comes from. This is a part of the first chapter of Brave New World by Aldo Huxley. And this novel describes how the dystopian system, so-called Brave New World, manipulates people's consciousness from the birth through hatchery institution along with chemical and educational devices. Appeal so-called soma is joyfully given to the people to please them with slipping effects when they feel sufferings. Classics such as Shakespeare's work are removed from the bookshelves. <laughs> you know, as George Orwell's uh, remark in his novel, 1984, here in this brave new world, ignorance is power. To them, living in this brave new world, the knowledge is a conditioned way of knowing and obeying. Reading such classics is defined as a barbarian culture or public crime. No critical thinking, and no self-reflection. Everyone's future is already engineered or predestined by the invisible power that be, and resistance is not allowed. Eric Maria Remarque's novel, All Quiet on the Western Front, also tells a story of a young boys under 19 years old who were forced or mobilized and sent to the war front of the World War I by their teacher, not by their will. And one day, the teacher sent a letter to these young soldiers who were his former students. He said in his letter, you are the iron youth. And do you know what this young boy's response to this for their former teacher was? Iron youth? Youth? No, we are already very old. In the war front, for an instant, we became human animal. Quote. You know, everything including the hope of youth is destroyed forever in the midst of the war. However, the headquarters finally got the report that silenced the tragedy of a human life by saying, all quiet on the Western Front, all quiet. Can we find out any kind of difference between this war or the brave new world and the reality of higher education? We all making students fall asleep by giving them the soma and then prevent, prevent them from thinking themselves, inquiring themselves. Most of the educational system is conditioned already, manipulative system. The value we esteem solidly respectful, such as justice, hospitality, peace, sympathy, 
and the human rights are rapidly melted into the air of profit, as you know very well, instead of education or a truthful learning. Now, values and our human consciousness are becoming the first victims in the battlefield of higher education everywhere in the world. I'm not sure, but I heard that even Harvard, I really like to ask David Perkins about this. Harvard and Tokyo University, not long ago, decided to reduce the numbers of the courses of humanities in the undergraduate program. Higher education is currently confronted with the Faustian bargain with Baptista Talis. Value versus profit. Truth versus ethically unquestioned desire for material success. That is the situation we are confronted with. We all know that it is not easy to choose value over profit or to choose a truth over, as I told you, the ethical and question desire for material success. Higher education desperately needs to ask itself, how can we cross over the borderline defined by the managers of the squat gray building that contains the infamous fertilizing room for the future generation. Our university is not an exception. Neither. And how can we have courage, I would say the political courage, to make an audacious step into a new world that knows no boundary, just like the unlimited vastness of cosmos for human freedom to explore the depths of our human mind, divinely blessed creativity, and the awesome beauty of our responsibility for the world and its future. Let me, so, uh, if original, I thought that I like to introduce our schools, uh, educational system, and all the goals, or some program. But uh, Steve already said something about the history and the spirit and soul of our university and the students. Twenty-three students came here. We'll share with you about that. So I just like to. Uh, tell just one or two things which are so important to uh, the, uh, I would say, spirituality or soul or the philosophy or the way we think about the education. You know, uh, this is the, uh, the building, I would say the headquarters. It does not get the report all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> you know, academy and peace, scholarship and peace. This is the essential idea that stands behind the Kyunghee University. And this idea was born in the midst of Korean War. The founder of this university experienced the Japanese colonial era and also experienced a tragedy of the Korean War. And he began to think about the future from this perspective, the scholarship and peace. Should we met together to make the human welfare for the future? You know, the ancient Rome, the Roman Empire, as you know, was well known for its adoration of victory. Rome at the time called war peace, as you know, Pax Roma. Very ironic definition of peace. So it may, it may sound a little bit offensive or ironic that I said that uh, the Pax Roma is a peace, so called peace, mainly sustainable or sustained by the military strength. 
a vampire. The founder of Kyung University once said that this motto, it was uh, written uh, at the building very clearly. Peace is more precious than triumph. And this is the basic spirituality of our university. Uh, we have experience, we have um, the Humanitas College was established five or six years ago to give the students to integrate it, approach it to the world. Can, uh, we are now thinking about Global Safety Open University and uh, let me tell you very briefly about this. Uh, this picture shows the founders' uh, work on a global scale to find out the way to make the world peaceful. And this is a Peace Bar Festival we have last year, and uh, this is in 2016. And if you look closer, you can find out person very familiar here <laughs> to <laughs> Gary and Heiter, and uh, many people are were present in this festival. This Humanitas College was uh, designed to give or offer the students to uh, experience some integrated uh, uh, system of education can also uh, let them have that kind of a perspective toward the world. Can, uh, we are thinking about uh, building up a kind of a global uh, safety open university it uh, has, uh, we do have in our mind, it's, it's ongoing, it's a program which is planned, not actualized right now. The future politics, future business, future cities, future education, and peace studies, and also it should be open to uh, the citizens. So, uh, two things I'd like to uh, share with you. Being lost, the experience of being lost is very important. Steve is responsible for the students who are here in Rome, and he really stressed the value of security. Okay, be careful, be careful, be careful. But I hear the different, different voice in my mind. Oh, let them be lost in the streets of Rome. I believe the uncertainty is the is this certain way of clarifying the uncertainties. Being lost, as Walter Benjamin said, being lost in the cities is the way you can understand perfectly about the cities itself. As the Pippin says, educating the unknown, I think, is being lost. It's very important. And I want to tell you a very brief narrative. You know very well the par parable of the blind persons who first touch the elephant, the big elephant. The big, the big elephant was imported from the foreign countries, and these blind persons groped, touched. And one blind person, oh, the elephant looks like a pillar. And the other said, oh, no, it's a snake. We know that this is the question of a holistic perspective about the reality. But let us raise one more question. If a philosopher who can see not blind. He may say something about the elephant from the holy's perspective. And then someone came to this spot and saw the elephant. The elephant came from the forbidden lands. And you know, the elephant was crying inside. He missed his homeland. And this person saw that and felt the same way. And then he begins to shed tears. Who is this person? The famous uh, Nobel writer of our career said, this is the point, right? Holistic perspective with a sympathy toward the other people. I think this is very important for a new paradigm of education in this world. I really like to uh, let our students mingle with the students here, dance together, 
sing together, and also I will like them be lost in these beautiful cities. Thank you so much. <laughs>